So we're still talking about this idea of why did I get null results in my study? So my, my results came in and I was expecting a particular relationship, but the data was such that uh, I can't be confident that the, the pattern I'm seeing isn't simply the result of chance. Uh, so I got, or, or maybe I don't even see any pattern. I don't even need to do a test of st st statistical significance. Just visually looking at the data, maybe I can see easily that, that the result I expected isn't there. And the question is why? And one possibility that we talked about, the third possibility we talked about, is the idea that the relationship is there, but you failed to detect it. And then the question is why? What it could be going on here that a relationship could be could exist, uh, could be present in your study, but your data comes in and it's not showing up. So one of the ways this happens, I'm going to try to explain in a in a couple of different ways to hopefully give you a really good intuitive understanding for this. So let's just suppose that we have. Uh, two groups that so we're, we're randomly assigning people to two different groups for our study. And we have some differences between the groups. We have some differences that maybe occurred from chance. So we have this slight difference, but that's so small, maybe we're just going to chalk that up to chance. If we were to repeat this a uh, second time, maybe because this is randomness that's influencing this, maybe this group would be a little taller this time instead of being the shorter one. And so in that case, the difference would look like this. Or maybe this one would have been a little taller. Or maybe this one would have been a little shorter. And we could get this sort of variation at different levels with none of it really indicating that we found any real results. This mild to moderate variation can be reasonably explained as randomness or chance factors influencing this. When I say randomness or chance, what's really happening is that we have a whole bunch of extraneous variables that could impact intelligence, right? There's other things other than the independent variable, other than waffles, that could be impacting someone's intelligence. So those extraneous variables are having random influences in the different groups, making it so that in some cases, this group has a higher intelligence and in other times this group has a higher intelligence and these are just random chance fluctuation fluctuations random chance influences that mostly equal out but there is some lack of equality uh, because of you know randomness is, is probably never going to equal out completely now the question rises what size of an effect do we expect eating waffles to have on your intelligence. If eating waffles has an impact, and it's a very real impact, but it's only a slight impact, like let's say that your intelligence starts off here, and if you eat waffles for a long time, then it increases a little bit to here, but it's a relatively small difference, and importantly, that difference is within this range of of an amount of change we would expect from chance, then we're never going to detect that under conditions where we've got all this noise and fluctuation from chance. So this, this is what we would call the effect size. Effect size, and I think you don't need a formal definition here in terms of, we, we could get into a statistical definition or how you calculate this statistically, but what I want you to have is a conceptual understanding that we're just talking about the size that we expect a variable uh, to have, the size of the effect that we expect a variable to have. So if we think if, uh, waffles are going to have some effect on intelligence, how large of an effect are we talking about? And even though we're using the term effect, uh, this could be in a case where we're not talking about an experiment. We're just talking about a correlation. In that case, when we say what effect size would we expect, we're talking about how strong would we expect the correlation to be. If there's a very strong correlation, that's the same thing as saying there's a, a large effect size. So going back to our example, if this is all, if this is all we expect the, the waffles 
to do, then we're not going to expect it when it doesn't exceed the level that can be can be reasonably expected from uh, that that randomness, that random fluctuation. But if we had, maybe we could have people eat a lot more waffles and then it would have a much larger impact on their intelligence. So maybe we could increase their intelligence a lot more. We could increase the effect size. If we can increase the effect size, then we're going to get differences in our study. We're going to get differences that are far beyond what we would reasonably expect from randomness, from chance. So we'll get statistical significance and we'll be able to confidently say that that difference is the result of our manipulation. The, the difference is the result of the underlying relationship that we are hypothesizing. So then we have evidence that our relationship exists and that we've found it. So that that is why we might be getting null results though is because of this competition between effect size we might say there's a competition between effect size versus error. Or instead of error, we could also say chance or randomness. Or sometimes you'll see these things called, this will be called noise. And sometimes when we're talking about it in terms of noise, sometimes they'll call instead of effect, we'll call this the signal. So this can be thought of as the signal versus the noise. And there's actually a very good book out there called The Signal and the Noise, which is all about this kind of an issue. Now, hopefully that makes uh, some intuitive sense to you, but uh, there is to just to really drive this home that this is not uh, this far out statistical concept. We don't have to talk about statistics at all to understand effect size. So imagine that you walking that you're walking along outside and you come across a tree branch and there's a leaf on this tree and suppose that you're extremely naive and new to the world maybe you're a very young child and you are not really quite sure what affects what what causes what in the world and so you're going to do a, a real life experiment a, a miniature experiment and you're going to come along here and you're going to blow on the leaf. And you can imagine that this causes the leaf to move in the direction that you're blowing. And so you would conclude blowing on the leaf causes the leaf to move. But that is in a case where there's no noise, there's no error. If it's at all windy, for example, we might expect that Maybe the changing wind directions are causing the leaf to move in one direction a little bit, and then maybe in another direction, and then maybe in another direction, and another direction. In other words, it's sort of fluttering around randomly. Now, if we just blow on that leaf very gently, if we just give a very gentle puff to that leaf, then that will have no detectable effect. Maybe we see it move, but we're not sure if, if seeing it move was caused by us or caused by these random changes in the breeze. And so that is an issue where the effect size is too small. So we might just see this is intuitively in your everyday life. If you're not sure if what you're doing is working, you might try to do it a bit harder to see if it has the effect you expect. So you blow on it very hard and that causes the leaf, even though it's moving in all these random directions, it causes the leaf to move more in this direction than in any other direction. And that's where by increasing the effect size, you're able to overcome that noise and detect the effect. Now in practical terms, this idea of increasing the effect size uh, or, or reducing noise, those are basically your options when you're doing a study. You can try to reduce down the influence of extraneous variables and random influences. And there's a lot of different ways you could do that. Or you could try to increase the effect size. And there's a lot of different ways you could do that. So you can try to improve the strength of your manipulation, increase the effect size, get a larger effect. Or if that's not an option, you can try to cut down on the noise. So some possibilities, for example, would be if you get a larger uh, sample size, if you're putting, if you're randomly assigning people to, to go back over here, if you're randomly assigning people to these groups, the larger your sample size, 
the more likely it is that those groups will be very similar on the average. The more people you have in each group, if they're put in there randomly, the more people you have, the more their individual differences tend to cancel each other out, making the groups on average uh, closer and closer to being the same, which cuts down that noise and thus allows you to detect smaller effects. So sometimes what you'll see is that we fail to detect a relationship even though the relationship is there uh, simply because the sample size in the study is too small. You could also consider that there might be these extraneous variables present so maybe instead of doing this experiment out in the real world you bring it in a, inside a laboratory or a controlled environment of some kind where you can cut down the influence of those variables even if they're ran having a random influence. So they're not really confounding variables because for something to be a confounding variable, it has to be varying in a systematic way, in a way that's varying along with your independent variable. But even if that's not the case, simply the effect of these extraneous variables, variables in terms of generating this random noise, that can make it harder to detect the effect that you're looking for. So hopefully I'm not confusing you. I hope I've given you a pretty good intuitive idea of what we're talking about with effect size versus noise or error or random variation. And hopefully that gives you an idea of why there could be a relationship present, but maybe you fail to detect it in a particular study.